What's going on guys? Come straight back again on another MLB The Show 20 Diamond Dynasty video. Everybody has been asking me, how am I making stubs? Because I put out a stub method and, you know, the cards came a little bit more expensive. And because of there's no inside edge or investing capital, gold prices are starting to go down. So how am I making my stubs? Today, we're going to go through that and more. But before we do, make sure to leave a like down below on this video. It really does help out the channel a bunch. Subscribe if you guys are new. Huge influx of new people. We just hit 26,000. You guys are killing it. Thank you guys so much. Going to have plenty more MLB tips, a new series debuting tonight, and more gameplay. So make sure to stay tuned on this channel. But let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, the way I have been making stubs, and I am going to list this as 20K per hour. That's on average. Sometimes it's more. Sometimes it's a little bit less. I would say between 15 and 25. Split the middle. It's about 20,000 a night I'm making. Uh, and it is pretty simple, but it is going to take some time. It is not for the faint of heart. It's not excruciating painful it's just not exactly what most people would call fun and that's flipping cards on the market uh, that is the best way to make stubs right now the exchanges are viable but they are a lot more risky if you want to find the best way to make stubs with absolutely no risk of losing out it is going to be flipping cards on the market now specifically what I am talking about uh, the ones that I do are live series cards in particular um, max overall set at 84 and then the minimum overall at 80. This, of course, is going to be Live Series Gold Cards. That is the best thing to flip right now. And I will preface this, I would recommend that you have at least like five, ten thousand, preferably at least ten thousand stubs before you start this because otherwise it's going to go up super slow. Uh, if you have only like five thousand, you can get started that way, but it's going to really not be that effective. It helps if you have the kind of stubs that I have, so um, you do kind of have to spend stubs to make stubs in this game. And what you're looking for is exactly something like this. Mitch Garver, you see the gap right here between the buy now and sell now. I know you've heard this a thousand times before but I have some things in specific you're going to want to look for Mitch Garver if you're to look at 1900 stubs remember there's a 10% tax there's an easy way to figure it out 1900 stubs we're just gonna forget about the 50 that's uh, 190 stubs taken out so take 190 minus uh, or 1900 minus 190 that's gonna be 1790 uh, so that is if you take 1790 uh, minus 1660 that's your profit so if I were to put in a buy order for this I'm going to make about 125 stubs which that's a pretty good flip you're gonna want at minimum for around this price range a 300 gap but do not be discouraged whatsoever by ones that are low price because those can be the best ones and gold cards just go so fast this is why this is the far and away best method uh, let's take a look at Edwin D is. You might look at this and say that is only a 230 stub gap. Um, you're going to make a good amount of profit. If I were to buy this card at 1085 and if I were to sell it then after at 1310, I'm still going to make about 100 stubs and these cards go really, really fast. So at some point you have to remember it is all about volume at the end of the day you do not want to be sitting around waiting for cards to sell and a big thing that I would go throughout that with is if you have a bunch of stubs there is I believe unlimited orders this year correct me if I'm wrong but last year it was 50 a damn sure ain't 50 anymore I think it's either 100 or it's unlimited but uh, plenty of room for you to keep putting in cards uh, so what, what I do and I'll show you guys right here I'll just go through some cards that have some good gaps and it will take a little bit of time for you to know what a good gap is for example for the most uh for the more expensive ones if you were to look at uh what's a good example xander bogart see this is a 300 stub gap approximately it's actually 270 do not do this because let's say if you get that card for uh 2235 if i were to sell it for this price you're making 20 you're making less than 20 stubs because as cards go up in price there's more tax remember that it's always 10 percent if it's 2500 take 250 stubs off so it'd be 2250 stubs that you're going to get after you sell the card so uh once you get this down flipping is going to be so easy it's going to be so seamless i always tell you guys when i do a pack opening or something if i'm just chilling um i always do this at night that 
that is the best time in my opinion to be flipping cards and while all i do i have it kind of better if you're on a tv it might not be as seamless you can still watch something on your phone but i have my monitor for my game here and then i have my computer monitor here so I'm just watching Netflix while I'm flipping cards and I barely have to focus at this game to flip cards because it is super easy and super seamless. Another one, Anthony Rizzo. This is a good gap. We get it for $19.95 if uh, I were to get it at, at that price and then I sell it. That's a really good turn. That is 150 stubs. Usually on a good flip, you'll get around 150 to 250 stubs. Sometimes you get worse. Sometimes you get even better. Sometimes Sometimes you really strike it hot and once again don't be discouraged by that you might think oh 150 stubs for one card that's uh, that's pretty minuscule it really is not if you do it in terms of volume if you keep continuously putting orders on cards you're going to make stubs so fast and what I was mentioning is just go through find every card that has a good gap and then as soon as something buy or as soon as something goes through if you buy it then quickly go and sell it do it as fast as possible sometimes i'll go on collaterals with a certain card usually i do this with rafael devers a lot where as soon as i buy one it's sold and as soon as i sell it another one is bought for me so what i do if i were to take rafael devers for example uh for 1200 stubs as soon as that card is bought then i'll go ahead and put it on the market and as soon as that card is sold to me i put a buy order on it keep in mind sometimes the sell now price does change and that happens sometimes where it was once a good gap it is no longer a good gap this is so good because um within each update this is or uh this is organized differently where all the cards are but you'll know where every single card is. Like when I'm in my zone, when I'm flipping cards, I don't even have to check where Austin Meadows is. I don't have to check where Fernando Tatis Jr. is because I know where they're gonna be because I have done this so much and you're going to get in that same groove, that same rhythm. And I know it sounds nerdy as hell, but trust me, it's actually quite enjoyable because I'm making 20,000 stubs an hour. If I do this for two hours a night, I'm getting 40,000 to 50,000 stubs a night which that really adds up if you do that for a week seven days get 40,000 that is uh 280,000 stubs that you're gonna get in one week that's gonna get you my trout so this is very effective very easy very seamless like I said you don't have to pay all that much attention and you're just gonna keep going and keep getting cards now I do want to mention uh, sometimes these ones I very rarely head over into the 84 overalls because these are a lot more volatile from what I have seen yes sometimes they do have good gaps for example Stanton uh, this is a good one but a lot of times people will price fix these and what I mean by price fixing and this is something you're going to have to look out for is you'll buy a card that say at this price 3070 studs for Giancarlo Stanton and he won't sell you'll go to bed and then he's now down to 3300 sometimes you kind of just want to bite the bullet since I'm doing this every night I do usually do that so um, if he didn't sell by the time I'm going to flip cards the next night uh, I want to have those stubs so I can flip more cards so I will sell it at a lower price to where I might just break even that is not a bad thing to do if you do have more time be patient and wait but sometimes prices do go down like cards like Joey Gallo he used to go for 6,000 a couple days ago. He's going for less than 5,000 now. So cards do go down in price. I really do recommend. There we go. We got a Rafael Devers off, and we're going to go ahead and put him back on the market. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it's just really easy and it's very seamless, but do be cautious. Uh, I recommend as soon as you get the card, go ahead and sell it. Don't sit on these cards. And if they don't sell within a day, sell them because it might go down in price. And that's when you could actually lose stubs. So just be attentive to it. And like I said, this is a great thing to do during the night. I think gaps typically are better during the night. That's why we're not seeing uh, great ones right now. And you'll also notice cards that just generally do have good gaps. Anthony Rizzo is always a great flip for me. Trey Turner is amazing. He always
always has a really nice gap that I like to go for. That sounds a little bit sus, don't worry about it, I promise you I'm just strictly talking about the gap in between the buy now and the sell now price. Um, but yeah, like I said, Glaber Taurus is another great one that you're going to get a lot. Um, and once you do this a lot, you'll, like I said, you'll get accustomed to the numbers that you're looking for. If it's a 2000 stub card, you know what to look for. This is a great gap on Blake Snell, where I'm going to get about 200 stubs for one flip, which is very, very good. In general, if it's anything above 1500, I would say around at least 300 stub gap. If it's below, look for 200 to 250. And if it's above the uh, 2000 price point, then I would look for at least like a 400 because if it's a uh, 2500 stub card, like I said, that is 250 stubs. So that's automatically only 150 would make off a 400 stub gap. I know it can seem very analytical and very number based like uh like a geek, like a nerd. I get it. But once you get accustomed and driven and are focused on this, you're going to find it to be amazing and you're going to make so much stubs. So I think that's about going to do it for this so I think that's about going to do it for this video. I believe I talked about everything and touched on everything that I did set out and intend to. Uh, so I gave you a nice little tutorial so you guys also see what I'm talking about while I'm doing things. And uh, yeah, if you have time, I know a lot of people are off work, off school with everything going on in the world. If you have time at night, this is perfect because this also kills one of my biggest problems. It's not even about them will do the show. Uh, maybe you have this problem too. I would have so many things sitting in my Netflix to watch list and I would never watch them because I either don't have time or I just never get around to it. Now I'm starting to knock those things down because I'm just having Netflix on while I'm grinding this. So I'm catching up on shows I want to watch and also making stubs to get a better team in the game. So it kills two birds with one stone. It is so seamless. It is so perfect. Make sure and give it a try. In the comment section, if you guys have any other questions, I'll be glad to go ahead and assist you uh, any further than I can. And Gold Cards Live Series is definitely what I recommend. There are viable options all the way across the board. Silvers, bronzes. Don't do diamonds, though. Those are very, very risky and the most volatile of any of the cards you're going to see. And it's the slowest out of any of the cards you're going to see as well but if you guys did enjoy this one make sure to leave a like down below thank you all for watching this hope you guys have a great day thank you so much